Welcome to session number 12 in the Anglican Tradition series. I'm going to focus on this particular uh, presentation on the Reformation, the Atonement, and the Anglican Tradition and its view of the Atonement. With the coming to be of Luther and particularly his critique of the Roman Catholic heritage, at core Luther argued very clearly that the heart of the Bible is the, what he calls the penal theory of the atonement, a justification by grace uh, uh, through faith. This particular uh, tradition, I mean, you could certainly find it in the Roman Catholic tradition. It's both implicitly and explicitly there in some thinkers. There's also different views of the atonement in the Roman Catholic tradition. The uh, Calvinist uh, reform tradition drew deeply from Calvin in this particular view. Both claimed to be the Bible was the source of authority, but in selectively interpreting uh, particular verses from Romans and Galatians, they argued this is the core of the New Testament. This is the reason Christ came. And so the, this particular view of the atonement became front staged. And if a person did not assent to this particular theological position, then they were undermining the very reason for Christ coming to this earth, our fragile home. The penal theory of the atonement soon became the predominant view of why Christ came within the Christian tradition. And those who dared to question it or to ask different questions about the history uh, of the atonement within the life of the church were seen as somehow heterodox or on the margins or edges of what authentic Christianity um, actually is. Now there are, are six views of the atonement and the question that has to be asked, why did with the coming to be of the Protestant tradition one view of the atonement come to dominate, which is the juridical or the penal theory of the atonement and those who differed with it then were seen as somehow subverting historic Christianity. The historic church's view, as I mentioned, has six views of the atonement and that comes from the patristic era. There is the penal theory of the atonement and those who overly react to it uh, perhaps are moving in a direction which is not helpful in the discussion of why Christ came to this fragile earth, our island home. That does exist and no one's going to doubt that that can be found in the Bible and certain uh, writers within the history of the church. There's the moral influence theory of the atonement that we find uh, embodied in certain important thinkers like Pelagius, um, Abelard, which are often seen interesting when you raise the names of, of Pelagius, who important to understand comes from England. And so when we think of Anglicanism, Anglicanism was, has never bought fully into the Augustinian perspective that of course Luther and Calvin will draw on in their interpretations of St. Paul. There is the Pelagian tradition within the Anglican heritage that Wesley is going to draw from uh, later on, building on the Arminian tradition. And so within that Pelagian Arminian tradition that the Wesleyans or, or Methodists pick up on, here we have another understanding of the atonement. And so why have people like Pelagius, Arminius, and those who, who draw on that, states of the Church of the Nazarene, which draws from the holiness movement of the Wesleyans, why are those seen as somehow suspect views of the atonement and the penal theory is held high? Well, it largely has a lot to do with the dominance of Luther and Calvin and their particular reading of Augustine. Uh, there's the ransom theory of the atonement that we find in C.S. Lewis's uh, Lie in the Witch in the Wardrobe. Uh, J.I. Packer, in his uh, couple of articles he's done on C.S. Lewis, he mentions very clearly that C.S. Lewis never held to a position of the penal theory of the atonement. And so we can see even in Packer and Lewis's two Anglicans uh, very different views of the atonement. There's the Christos Victor view of the atonement that we find in Gustav Allens. And then one of the great consensus within the patristic era is God became human so humans could be deified or divinized. And so as people participate in the very nature of Christ, their very nature is transformed into a divine nature. And so there's these various uh, traditions within Christianity of why Christ came. And so to buy into just one is to truly reduce the understanding of the, uh, the atonement to one perspective. And it does great hurt and harm to the breadth and the fullness and Catholicity of the Christian church at its very, its very best and noblest.